Well, I'm going to finish up the second part of this normal discussion. And instead of using the book, which you have, I'm going to draw these pictures for you. The first one shows uh, the box being lifted. You drag the box. Obviously, the force downward would be mg. The normal force, which I'll use a different color for, would be this. And in this situation, of course, the normal force would be equal to mg. But in the scenario, we're pulling uh, on the box upwards. And so a component is pulling it forward, and this is some force at some angle theta. And the forward component in the x-axis would be uh, f cosine theta. And then upward component in the y-axis, the force y, would be f sine theta, which actually makes it lighter. And so the weight component is less. So the weight component down would be mg, but we get to reduce it by the upward component that's pulling it upwards, which would be f sine theta. And so the normal force, the reaction, the compression, the force that the, the floor has to push up on the box to keep the floor from collapsing, keep the box from crashing down into the basement, the upward force is now equal to mg minus the pulling upward, so f sine theta. And so that's the normal force there, the perpendicular force. And uh, this is going to come in handy when we start talking about friction, because friction is going to depend on the normal force. Friction is caused by the normal force. If there is nothing to push back upwards, then there is no friction. And that's the beauty of friction. All right. And then the final picture that's in uh, the chapter is an object on a ramp. So if we take an object on a ramp, and we'll start with a ramp here, and we'll put a box on it. Well, straight downwards is mg. It will always be mg. The weight of the object will be straight downwards. A component, a component of its weight is trying to crush the ramp. And a component of its weight is trying to move it down the ramp. Now this is where one of them is sine and one of them is cosine. We remember that. And if you remember your sine curve, it, sine, it starts at 0 and goes up to 1 once you reach 90 degrees. So the sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of 90 is 1. So now which one of these would be greatest if the ramp was at an angle of 0? Well, if the ramp was at 0, this component would be greatest. The movement component would be non-existent. It wouldn't move. If you had a box sitting on a ramp like that, there's nothing making it move sideways. So the sine curve is at 0, at 0 degrees. So in fact, the movement component is the sine. So this component that causes it to move is mg sine theta, where theta is the angle of the ramp. The movement component is mg sine theta. The component that's trying to crush the ramp is mg cosine theta. Because cosine, the cosine curve, it's 0 and goes to 90, starts at 1 and goes down to 0. So if this is at 0 degrees, we've got full cosine value of 1. So the full weight downwards is mg. And if we manage to take the ramp straight up and down, in that scenario, there would be nothing trying to cra crash the uh, ramp, pushing against the ramp. And so uh, uh, mg cosine theta for 90 degrees would be mg times 0. Just There would be 0. The 0 part of the weight is trying to crush the ramp. So the component of, that pushes downwards on the ramp is mg cosine theta. And the reaction to that, the ramp pushing back on this component, produces the normal force. So the normal force would be upwards, and it would be equal to mg cosine theta. mg cosine theta. You might want to review that just a little bit. I'll do it for you. 
we've got a ramp at some angle theta. An object is sitting on the ramp. It has a weight that wants to pull it straight to the center of the Earth, and that's going to be called m times g. The force downwards is weight. Part of its weight will tend to move it along the ramp. The component that co tends to move it is mg sine of theta. I sometimes remember that because if you've been moving, you uh, sometimes see signs along the way. And so the movement component is the sine component. A part of its weight is going to try to crush the ramp. If you tried pushing your snowblower into the back of your pick -em up truck and you used a piece of cardboard, it would just crush. You need a, a firm piece of wood that can withstand it. But it's not have to withstand the whole weight, just part of the weight. And the part it's got to support is mg cosine of the ramp angle cosine of the ramp angle. Hopefully we don't crush our ramp, and the reason we don't crush our ramp is because the reaction to that, and that's called the normal force, or the perpendicular force, and it's perpendicular to our uh, ramp, and it's equal and opposite to this component, so it's also mg cosine theta. And in about a half a chapter we're going to introduce the concept of friction, and friction always opposes motion. And so if you have something sitting on a ramp, then uh, the friction component would be mg sine theta, but uh, more often than not, it's moving down the ramp, and the equation is just slightly more complicated. But that's the normal force and Newton's third law of motion.